Liquid just pulled in the shop. Pretty amazing. This is unbelievably one of the most popular machines that we see coming into the shop. The Bergman 650 Executive. So, you can see it's a little dirty. It's going to go through the entire process of our checklist, detailed. Next time that you see this baby, it's not going to look like this. It's not going to look like this. <laughs> We got Matt out the door. Oh, wrong one. Here we go. So what is it that we have today that we're gonna be talking about? Oh yeah. Hey buddy. Hey buddy. Is this the next one on the chopping block? The next one on the block is the Suzuki Bergman 650. Oh yeah. So this is absolutely a scooter that we have had much interest in, at least for us, for the past couple years. So I, think, I mean, even the couple videos you did walking around, I think we're over 30,000 30, views combined. $30,000 would be nice. Yeah, that'd be great. 30,000 views right. isn't too shabby. You, so guys, you guys really love scooters. This is a, <laughs> an 08. This is a 2008. So Matt, give us a rundown of what's going to happen here. So we're going to give this the 48 point checklist like we do every single bike that leaves this facility in, in a new ownership. We're just going to go over the bike and whatever it needs at this point, we're just going to order up. Now I know there's a couple of things like we're going to be replacing a lever, uh, possibly a mirror assembly, and then we're going to give it the full 48 point checklist and find out if it needs any other little hidden items. So. We're just going to take you along on the journey and whatever we find, you know, you guys are going to see firsthand. This isn't anything that's staged. We're just going to take it through a 48 point checklist like we normally would any of our bikes through the shop here. But it's cool. the executive model, which means this. I could never get over that. A no. scooter with automatic power folding mirrors. That's just. That's, that's that's executive level. That's that's just awesome. <laughs> I, I don't. I like that for for whatever reason. I like that it's just got power folding mirrors. This one doesn't have the heated seat though, unfortunately. That white one we had was that was top of the line. Well, this one does have ABS. Yes. All the other little amenities, but uh, nevertheless, it's a Suzuki Bergman 650, and we're gonna get it prepped up so it meets our expectations. And it will definitely, more than likely, most hopefully, exceed your expectations. Absolutely. First thing I'm going to do, though, with any bike is I like to start them up. Sometimes I take them before a ride. There's snow on the ground today, so that's not going to happen on this one. But I like to get them up to operating temperature, make sure everything's functioning properly. Cooling fan, you know, keep an eye on the temperature, make sure they don't overheat. And then when it's nice and hot, good time to drop the oil so that's what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna fire it up and let this thing run and then from there we're gonna drop the oil and start looking this thing over fold them mirrors fires right up is the parking brake on oh no these these are a pain when they start Push backwards. This one feels a little heavy. Tires are a little low on air. Ugh. Real question though, Josh, would you own a scooter? I might. I absolutely would own a scooter. These things, they impress, the ever, they, they impress me so much. It's one of the only scooters I've ever been on that will 
basically go to redline in high gear. I mean, they're just impressive. They'll, they'll definitely, they'll keep you on your toes. <laughs> yeah, well for something that has a 650cc motor in it, is long enough to have two people where you're not super cramped, and a lot of storage space underneath the seat, it's kind of tough to beat in terms of if I want to go somewhere and pick stuff up, take somebody with me and go have fun. Because it's always much more fun on two wheels than it is jumping in your car. So, I mean, this is two wheels and a motor. And every motorcycle, it's the same thing. So whether it's yeah. a configuration where it's a step through versus I'm actually throwing a leg over, I, mean, I guess it really doesn't matter. Who doesn't appreciate the step through design? <laughs> I love that. I mean, commuting to and from work, 100%, I'd take a scooter. I mean, oh, yeah. just, it's just something, like you said, it's easy to just throw stuff in the back. You could even pick up groceries on the way home from work with this thing. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah, and then think about the gas mileage that you get out of it. Oh, absolutely. This, this has got to be at least 40 plus. Yeah, I was going to say, more. probably more. Oh, Look at that. Power shield power windscreen so yeah when we do our check you know while it's out here i can check everything and make sure all my controls work you know making sure that the windshield goes up and down like it's supposed to make sure all my turn signals are working everything looks good there make sure my headlights both function properly brake lights i can't see those josh what do they look like they're working good they're working. All uh, right, yeah, so I can just go over the bike here and uh, listen for anything unusual. This one sounds really healthy. It's only got 20,000 miles on it. So not a lot of miles for an 08. That would be, what is it, 2021 now. So yeah. that's, that's not a lot of miles a year. That's, no. that's about 1,000 miles a year, roughly. So. looks good not too shabby it's gonna clean up nice gonna get a good service and when that's all finished she'll be up on the website for sale unless somebody winds up stopping in and seeing it because that that does happen I was gonna say yeah this one this one here if we put it up on Instagram and Facebook I think that uh We'll probably have it sold before the service is done. That is quite That's, possible. I do have a customer that sell has pretty asked, quickly. For, asked for one. So well, even the people that watch the video, yeah. they want to know. So I, I, I don't think this is going to be a hard sale. Not all at all. Right. Well, we're going to get to work on this baby. Like I said, I just got to wait up. for it to. Heat, like I said, I just got to wait for it to heat up and make sure the fan cycles and goes through all that process, and then she'll be ready to go. We'll see you inside, it's cold out here. <laughs> Alrighty, so one other thing I forgot to mention, while it's out here running, every bike that we service and sell will have a battery tender lead on it. We don't sell it with the battery tender, we do have battery tenders available, but we put the lead on there for you so that that way all you need is the battery tender. And with that lead on there, I do two things. First, I check and make sure the charging system's working with just a voltmeter. And I also make sure that the battery tender lead, the fuse isn't blown because I check it through the lead here. Well, that's what we're gonna do is we're just gonna check the charging system, make sure that it's putting out the proper volts. So at idle, we're at 14 volts, which is more than enough. And then as we rev it up, Going up to about 14.6, 14.5, put the brake on. It's holding steady. So charging system's good. I know that this tester, I know that this battery tender lead is good. So fan has cycled already. So we're ready to pull this thing into the shop and drop the oil out of it. Definitely. <laughs> The tires are definitely low on air. 
makes it a bit difficult to push. All right, let me shut that, put this stuff up here. It's so cold outside today. This makes me pine for a nice warm day. Mm -hmm. The sun is so deceiving too when you're in here. Tire pressure is low on this, Josh. Any guesses as to how much is in them? Five. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit Maybe more. Ten. I don't know. Pushed it. I think you're probably going to be close with your five <laughs> estimate. I'm looking at them as they're going. And, uh, it feels like they're five. Crunching. <laughs> it feels like five. Give it the old college try. Ugh. Missed it. Put it up. Whew, she's a big girl. Put it up. So I'm gonna say five PSI as well. It felt very low. Guess it would help if I had the air on. All right, rear tire, I'm gonna say 10. Brake's a little tight back here. Might have to see what's going on there, but I'm gonna say 10 PSI on the rear tire. It's going to need a rear tire. That thing is shot. Yeah. Didn't even turn the gauge on. So <laughs> zero is the answer for the rear tire. Now we're registering something. See, what do these things hold? 33 sounds good. So the back tire had zero. That would make it very difficult to push. And the front tire, I don't think is gonna be in much better shape. There's not even a valve stem cap on the front tire. Public service announcement. Put your valve stem caps back on. <laughs> <laughs> really, Josh? Sorry. <laughs> that one was at seven. So now I have 12. So you were close with your five, really yes. Was it real squishy when it, when it was bouncing? Mm -hmm. It felt squishy. So there, that'll probably, that'll probably feel a little bit nicer. But I think just from looking at it, we're probably gonna go with a set of tires on this thing just because that one's shot and this one's not much better. It looks like it's been run on low tire pressure for a little while. A little bit so of uneven it's, wear. It's pretty uneven, pretty choppy. So it's gonna get a fresh set of tires on there. And uh, let me go grab a drain pan and I'm gonna drain the oil out of this sucker. And the brakes are a little bit sticky. sticky. So maybe even change out the valve stem, huh? Oh, we, every tire we change, we change out the valve stem. That's, that's no questions asked. That's just something we do. I've had instances where people have not changed out valve stems. And that's something you don't want to lose going down the highway is oh, no. a valve stem because it's going to take your tire from all the air pressure to no air pressure in a second. It's, it's something that we, uh, for the extra couple dollars and cents it costs to put a valve stem in the bike, it's peace of mind and added security that, why not? You're right there, just do it. <laughs> You're not saving any money. So a little bit of a tip, top tip today is make sure that we're checking tire pressures. Before you go ride, I'd say every week you should probably be checking your tire pressures. I mean, and make takes, sure valve, valve stem integrity is there. 
it takes five minutes to look your entire bike over, checking the lights, checking tire pressure, really get in the habit of doing it. It's only going to help you, you know, and it could potentially save your life. A little bit of a pre-flight. Absolutely. You've only got two wheels. Uh, I tell people that all the time. You've only got two wheels when you're dealing with a motorcycle. So why not make sure that they're both inflated? But yeah, definitely check that stuff, guys, because that would be very difficult to steer this motorcycle if uh, we left those tires at the pressure they were at. All right, so oil drain pan. So one of the things I was looking at here, Josh, is they actually labeled when the oil should be changed next, 21,000 miles. So we're right there. It's just below 21,000. So we're keeping with their records, I guess. Does anybody have any weird way of keeping track of their mileage? I know that I use like the secondary trip counter as my mileage tracker for oil changes. This, this I've seen this quite often as somebody making a label. What do you guys use to track your mileage? What do you use, Josh? Just a window sticker or kind off of, memory? Off, off memory. You just go off memory. Oh, that works too. So one of the things that we found over the years with uh, getting these bikes ready is we used to go off of service recommendations, like when something should be serviced, that's when we thought it deemed it necessary to check stuff. What we've been founding, founding? Founding. What we've been finding is that things like air filters, you don't really want to go by the checklist. And on the Bergman here, it's super easy to get to the air filter, so why not check it? And this one here, I'm glad I did because this thing is nasty. Definitely getting a brand new air filter for this one. And we found things like mice, mouse nest, uh, you name it, inside an air box. It's a beautiful place to be. It's protected from the elements. And animals love living in air boxes. So we always check the air filters. It was something we never used to do because on some bikes, it is an absolute nightmare to get to the air filter but it's very rewarding to find stuff like this and we're able to replace this before you guys get it. But we check everything and, and that's the reason why guys. So I have the oil draining out of this. I'm checking stuff like the rear differential fluid, you know, stuff like that looks nice and clear. So we don't worry about it if it's still clear looking and, and in good condition. Uh, probably will be changing the I don't know if they consider it transmission oil, but there is a secondary drain plug for the CVT on this. I don't know what they call it. Sorry, off the top of my head. I will once I look it up, but uh, there is a secondary drain plug and uh, we'll be changing that fluid as well. But um, so far the bike's looking to be in good shape. There's just a couple little service issues, you know, air filter, oil change, but that's all common practice that we do every, with every bike. Nothing, nothing crazy so far on this one. But uh, yeah, we'll just uh, update you as we go along. So that's what I've gotten done so far. I'm gonna order an oil, oh, yeah. We're gonna order an air filter and then I'm just gonna complete the oil change on both the engine oil as well as the CVT. Rear differential looks good, so we're just gonna leave that alone for now because no sense in changing something that has clean fluid in it. Good. Yeah, yeah. So, I guess until the next video, happy riding. I can't wait to get this thing done. These things are a blast to go ride up and down the street. Awesome. So, I got to look up some parts, though. Got a little bit of work ahead of me. We'll see you in the next one, though, guys. Thanks for checking it out. I cannot wait.